Bruchem Aboyim, thank you for coming. Again, we're on the uh, second lecture. Again, one of them of an introduction again. Uh, to give us some basis for this whole concept of gematrius. And again, with gematrius will come how we handle letters and words and again, things that we've mentioned. And uh, again, we'll give us a little basic outline of what it's about. So numbers are man's essential tool to inter interact with many plural forms around him. We use numbers to measure, to count, a sequence phenomena within the universe. In mathematics and science, numbers are used to investigate the complex structure of the cosmos. In the field of sports, numbers record athletic facts and triumphs. In the world of commerce, Numbers are the foremost measure of business activities in terms of profit and losses. However, numbers are also featured in man's daily affairs. Anything from timepieces to timetables, home addresses to telephone contacts, pin numbers to passwords, salaries to financial benefits. Life without numbers would be inconceivable, not only in the secular everyday world, but they are also critical and play an important role within the parameters of a Jewish life. Numbers are absolutely indispensable within the practical realm of mitzvah observance. We use them such as in calculations of dates in the calendar, Shabbos that comes out every week, holidays, circumcision, again on the eighth day, bar and bat mitzvahs, 12 and 13, respectively. Formation of a minion for prayer, again, having ten men. The dimensions of a sukkah, that it has to be um, no, no lower, again, this, the schach and whatever, how, how many walls it has to have, being within tefach, uh, three tefachim, three, uh, twelve inches of the ground, of not being any higher than twelve amos, probably twenty amos. There are different things that would make it invalidated and make it kosher. Measurement of an Eruv, um, how that has to be and how far a person can walk on Shabbos outside of a city. Dietary laws, how much, again, what we call bottle b'shishim, something is negated in 60 parts. You have a drop of milk that falls into a pot of chicken soup. There are things like that. Um, again, also how much you have to be, drink to fulfill your requirement of wine making Kiddush, the cups of wine on Pesach, all of these type of things with dimensions. Uh, again, these are just a few examples. Again, there are many, many more. Now, the significance of numbers include the use of gematria, such as the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The Aleph has a numerical value of one, Bez, a numerical value of two, and on and on. Also, the number of letters or words found in a scriptural sentence or Jewish prayers, such as there are 248 words in the Shema Yisrael, and, uh, or the 18 blessings of the Amida. Again, the 248 coincide with the 248 limbs of the body. And the 18 blessings of the Amida correspond to the 18 vertebrae of the spine, that when we bow, we show submission to God. Numbers relate to the divine design embedded within creation. Now, Judaism invests numbers with a metaphysical meaning, not because of what they are, but because of what they do. The innate characteristic of a specific number embodies the spiritual truths to which it gives expression. What do I mean by that? For example, the Jewish nation was established by the illustrious Avot, fathers, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There are only three of us, no more, no less. It comes, uh, and it comes to describe the exclusivity of this group. Just as three is the basis of the atom, the building block of the material universe with the proton, neutron, and electron. Additionally, the spiritual truth behind this physical reality taps into the symbolism of the number three as the epitome of the foundation, permanence, and continuity, continuity, excuse me, the basic building blocks forming the indestructible godly nation of Israel. The, the, the departure from Egypt 
began a counting process that built us and the nation to the holiday of Shavuos when the Torah was given on Mount Sinai. The counting in the Jewish calendar begins on the night after the Israelites left Egypt. Here they started to count in the knowledge that each day and week carries within it its own unique or specific task. No day exists in isolation. This 40-day period in the Jewish calendar records the original passage of the children of Israel as they were molded into one national entity. Each day had a specific purpose to it. Each day they would work on one of the seven character traits that God has taken upon himself and the mixture between them, meaning to say that the first day was counted would be kindness of kindness then kindness of severity. So each one of the, of the seven tra traits were included within each week, with one being foremost in each one of them. First week being kindness, second week being severity, on and on. Again, this was to reach the ultimate goal of encamping, encamping at Har Mount Sinai. As the verse says, like one man with one heart. If this was the point when the ultimate purpose and conclusion of the Exodus would be realized. In fact, the point that was reached then, and maybe not since, this idea of one nation united to God, and all everyone basically on the same page, which is a Herculean task to have happen. But again, they were counted basically as one. We see the Jewish nation in the desert being subjected to a national census. In fact, the Jews have been counted nine times in history. The tenth will be when the Messiah will come. Every individual Jew had to be included in the nat national census. The census accented the f that each Jew was entrusted with a divinely appointed task, one that was unique uniquely his. It made no difference whether you were Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, or some lowly individual each person counted equally as one. Each person was counted by name or a half shekel, a coin, so as to ward off the evil eye, something we still follow today, now co not counting Jews by heads. Even in a minion, we have a quorum of men. We don't count them as one, two, three, four, ten, ten. But we do is we either count them by a Hebrew phrase that has ten words, and then each person has one of those letters, pardon, one of those words to add up to ten. Or, if a person is not familiar with that, we just use the, the term of not one, not two, and in this way negate the idea, so to speak, of counting. Uh, we do know that when the Jews were counted uh, for a reason that was not given by God, they brought about a plague. So again, this idea of the evil eye, what we call the eye in horror, uh, is something that we do give credence to, even though by, in reality we're not a superstitious nation. But at the same time, the evil eye seems to work. The evil eye is really a person being jealous of a sense of, a, of accusing another person, why does he deserve? So a person has to be careful because when a person is accused before heaven, they look at his record. And sometimes this brings about disastrous results. So being counted individually, each person sticks out. Being counted by head or by a coin, which is how they ran the census in the Jewish nation every year, by people donating this half shekel and then counting the half shekel, shekels that would tell, tell the number of people that were there between the ages of 20 to 60. In addition, it determined how his identity would best complement the nation as a whole. As it says in Pirkei Avot, If I am not for myself, who else will be there for me? This is because the very process of counting means that it calls him to account. It comes to determine whether or not he has actually lived up to his charge. It's an amazing thing that we all have a worth, everyone. Again, it says in Pirkei Avot that no person is without his time and his place. I remember years ago that there was a gas shortage. And I make it a point to always be kind and friendly to everyone. 
So the gas station I used to get my gas from, I developed a relationship with the person who owned it. And where everybody else was in line waiting for eight gallons of gas, he filled my tank up without me even asking. Because again, you never know what do you need a gas station attendant for. The time comes. So everyone, every place, just by acknowledging who people are, counting them as one, giving them a sense of importance, gives you a sense of importance. Again, it becomes very important to, to, to our relationship with the world, especially with our fellow Jews, Jews that we associate with. The Jewish people rightly count and construct numbers, building them up until they realize the destiny of creation. So basically speaking, what gematrias do is they help us. It's really a code. The Torah is kind of like a Gulliver's, Gulliver's travel, Travels, where a little child reads the book, and it's cute. Big people, small people, and him going on his travels. Whereas, and this is just a plain book. When we get older and we read it as a college uh, assignment, we realize the great symbolism that, that is brought out in the book. The Torah is light years ahead of that. There are so many codes um, to teach us things. The, the, when was the world created? When was the first creation of what we call the molet, of the first um, making of the moon? And we say that it happened on the on Monday. And this, it, on, pardon me, on the on Monday in the fifth hour, I think it's 243 chalokim. And if you take the first letter of the he of, of Beratius is a bays, which is two, which is Monday. Take 42, go 42 um, letters, and that'll give you the day, and then go 42 more, and 42 more. It will give you the whole thing that you need. Again, codes that are within the whole description and the makeup of the Torah. Um, we'll be dealing with all of these things as we go through the numbers. Starting with next week, we'll begin with the Aleph, one, and what we're going to try to do is at least go through, I'm hoping to at least through 30, we'll pick certain other numbers that I think are important, um, such as the fact that we have the 613 commandments, 248 positive, 365 negative, um, how certain words, not only do they have a meaning, but they also have a numerical value, and how those numerical values match up to other numerical values, and how they give us an insight or how we can rearrange letters. So the word atem is you. If you take that, say those same letters, also spells the word emet, which is truth. So there is asisa uh, and you shall do them, asisa motam, and you shall do them. There's also asitem emet. You should do truth. A person should always be honest. So there are different hidden meanings within all of these things, and this is what we're going to ex we're going to explore. And hopefully, when it's all said and done, um, you may have an appreciation for just the fact that nothing is an accident, and the fact that uh, a person's name has a certain numerical value. My wife and I, uh, together, both of our names, and again, there's also a method of dropping zeros, so that zeros become unimportant. So you can count a lower case. In doing that, both my name, Mordechai, becomes 13, my wife's name, Devorah, without a vav, and we can do that too. Take a letter and add a letter. And both of us have 13, again, which is the, the miracle value of love. And love together, when you have put 13 and 13 together, also comes to the 26, which is God's name, which is God's name of mercy. Again, which when, when two people love each other, brings God into the mix. Two and six also is eight, as we know, something above this world. The eight candles on Hanukkah, the eight days of a circumcision. All of these things come into play. And hopefully on our journey, going through numbers and letters and how this all comes together, we'll have a better appreciation for the depth, wisdom, and the true greatness of what the Torah is and how it's able to give us information we never realized all the secrets that are hidden within them. Again, we believe that there are shivim pandam the Torah. There are 70 facets to the Torah. 
and again, um, hopefully next week, again, as I mentioned, we'll begin with the Aleph and take our journey through the Gematrias, through the numbers, and I hope you're there to be counted. God bless and be well and have a great Shabbos.